New Omicron variant sweeping across the country. XBB 1.5 now accounts for more than 40% of the new COVID-19 infection. And that's right. It's spreading even more rapidly here in the Northeast, accounting for roughly 75% of cases. And we're already seeing a rise in hospitalization. So to help us understand what's happening right now, we have NBC News medical fellow, Dr. Akshay Sayal, joining us now. Dr. Sayal, I mean, this already sounds daunting, like XBB as a name. I mean, how does it compare to those other subvariants? So XBB, it's, it's, a, it's a derivative of Omicron. So, you know, for the last year or so, every variant that we've had so far has been part of this Omicron family. Family. Now, XBB is a little bit different than the BA4, the BA2, the BA5 that we've heard about um, because the worry is that it can actually dodge some of the antibodies that we've gathered from infection, from vaccination, or, or both. Um, and so that's really what we're watching for. You know, because we have a variant that can evade that immune response, will we start to see a rise in cases? Will we start to see a rise in hospitalizations and deaths, um, you know, as, especially coming off of this holiday travel season? Easier or harder to get than the uh, Omicron original variant? You know, it's a great question. You know, I was just on the phone with the CDC before coming on here and you know we don't have an answer is this more transmissible does it cause more severe disease okay. are the symptoms any different this is still a little bit new so we don't know um, but the good news is you know with every variant we've had so far the vaccines have stood the test of time uh, you know standing up against hospitalization and severe disease so even if we see a rise in cases we're hopeful that that rise in hospitalizations and deaths can be minimized as much as possible and now I did see some reporting that said that this particular subvariant could have sort of maybe evade those boosters a little bit better is that true yeah it is it's true. We have some early data out here showing that, you know, those, especially those who've gotten the first line of boosters before the bivalent boosters, they don't hold up too well against this variant. Now, the good news is, you know, there was a study out of Emory University this week that showed if you do get that bivalent booster, the new booster, which frankly, a lot of people aren't getting right now. But if you do get that booster, you do have some added protection against these um, XBB variants that we're really, calling. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, know. I mean, you know, just... Honestly, every day. Better news next time you come, please. I mean, it, it really is depressing. It's, I think people are like, enough. We've done it already. I know. It's been, we're saying so, it over and over again. Yeah. How do you keep? How do you keep yourself protected when you feel like sort of I give up? Fatigue. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm part of this, too. You know, I'm, we're all, I think, kind of over the respiratory viruses, the flu, the COVID, the RSV. Now we're seeing a rise in strep infections, too. So how do you keep yourself protected? You know, one in three people over the age of 65, this is the group we're really worried about, have gotten the bivalent booster, the new booster. Um, so, you know, if you are somebody who hasn't gotten it yet, especially if you haven't had a recent infection, go out and get it right after the show.